Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And I know, I know, I know I'm bringing up Ghostbusters. This is probably going to end up being the last time we talk about Paul Feig's Ghostbusters and what could have happened. All right. This is probably the last time. If there is a God in heaven, and actually from what I talked about previously, if there's a Spielberg on earth, it won't happen because he's the most influential man in Hollywood. Anyway, uh, Paul Feig has got a new movie coming out this week called A Simple Favor. And of course, doing all the rounds, people are going to be asking questions. Well, what was his last movie? The Titanic failure known as Ghostbusters 2016, a movie that uh, that is just bad. It, it, I mean, there's no better way to describe it than it's just, you know, what? I, I think even it gives bad movies a bad name. It's mediocre. That's, I think, the worst, most offensive part about it is that it's mediocre. But if the movie had done well enough, the $400 million it needed in order to get a sequel, that's what they were talking about, need $400 million in order to be profitable enough to warrant a sequel because Sony's super good with money, what would have happened? Well, he talks about that here a little bit. Now, it says here, one of the strangely more controversial reboots in the past few years was Paul Feig's Ghostbusters, starring Kristen Wiig, Melissa McCarthy, Kate McKinnon, Leslie Jones. Not sure why an all-female Ghostbusters got so many up in arms, but all the same, I think it's safe to say at this point, we will never see the Paul Feig sequel. Well, to answer the per this, this author's question from dreadcentral.com, uh, it wasn't that it was an all-female reboot. It was that nobody wanted it. And when the trailer came out and it was garbage, people were like, no, this is bad. And then the, the, the response from the media came, well, you're all just like sexist, misogynistic bigots. And everyone's like, no, it just sucks. And then that became the narrative is that it was, you know, it was it was a bunch of men's rights activists that were arguing against this movie. Stupid stuff. Stupid, stupid stuff. Anyway, speaking recently on the Happy, Sad, Confused podcast, Paul Feig did go into talking about what exactly he wanted to do in regards to Ghostbusters 2, probably in, in, I would say in regards to where he wanted to take it. Now he says here, I definitely wanted us to go to another country because when we were doing the press tour, the international press tour, every country, the reporters would come in with these drawings or artist renderings of that country's ghosts. And every country has these really wild ghost stories and ghost characters that they scare kids with or keep people in line with. I really love the idea of the Ghostbusters going to like Asia. See, I want to argue that that's a two-prong answer there, right? That's a two-prong answer. Uh, but we'll get to that here uh, after the... I, I just kind of want to finish up the last little bit from the article because I, I do agree with it. It says here, I agree that taking the Ghostbusters International is probably the best way to go. If there is another sequel or reboot down the line, uh, let's see some other cultures represented here. There's quite literally an entire world of cool shit out there to mine for sequels and reboots and sequels to reboots, which is very true. And again, I want to say I agree with that concept. I've read books about uh, about ghosts and spirits and apparitions and legends and myths and and all of these things from other countries uh, over the years. And uh, and I find them to be very fascinating. The stories that they're told to keep the children in line. I mean, the, like the, the movie The Village, M. Night Shyamalan's The Village, which I feel is woefully underrepresented, to be honest with you, because I like that twist where the creature in the woods, and this is a spoiler, was was put on by the people to keep the kids in line and everyone fearful from going out there in order to not know that they're, you know, that they're living in modern age just on a, on a forest reserve somewhere that they that they paid for. Uh, you know, I thought that was a cool twist. It kind of played up that old, uh, you know, urban legend uh, myth, the creature in the forest. If you if you don't eat your vegetables, wash behind your ears and brush your teeth, you're going to get got sort of thing. So I like that. I thought that was kind of cool. And I would like to see if they were doing a Ghostbusters 2. I think that would be interesting. Imagine the Ghostbusters traveling to Ireland and fighting a banshee. That could be something, right? But it, again, it would have to be an interesting enough story that would warrant Sony putting out a couple hundred million dollars for this project. And the thing was, the story for Ghostbusters, the reboot, was pretty damn terrible. It was just lazy, right? And again, it was kind of focusing around this Ronin, Rowan character who's kind of like a men's rights activist is what they were trying to say, or at least a misogynist, right? And he was trying to like do that angle. I thought that was stupid as hell because it just wasn't, it was just so creepy, but it wasn't done in a way that was even like remotely interesting. He had like no character development. We, we knew nothing about him to care about him being the bad guy. Again, the movie was terrible with or without the dance sequence. It was just bad. Best part of that thing was Chris Hemsworth. Because of that, we got Thor Ragnarok and the humor that came along with that. So, hey, listen, if we're going to give Paul Feig any credit, 
any credit whatsoever. It's going to go to that. It's going to go to Thor Ragnar Rock. Okay. We'll do that. That's the only credit I'll give. Only, only credit. However, the second prong I want to talk about there when he says go to like Asia. See, that was part of the problem here is the fact that because the way Asian, if they're going to Asia, he's predominantly talking about China, right? He's predominantly talking about China. And this is where Ghostbusters 1 came into a bit of trouble. Now, if I recall correctly, and I could be wrong, but I do think this is how it went down. They weren't actually allowed into China because of ghosts. Movies that deal with with creatures or spirits or ghosts or whatever uh, oftentimes get banned in China because of the way that the culture looks at that sort of thing. Their, their, their history and the way that they look at ghosts, it's, it's considered culturally insensitive to approach it from that perspective. So Ghostbusters, where they're busting ghosts, cutting ghosts in half, shooting them, blasting them, so on and so forth, might can be considered offensive to those people who are in China. And the movie didn't go there. And that cut out a large market that Hollywood is so desperately coveting. So if they were able to get a sequel, they would have made it with China in mind. They would have made it. This is, again, my speculation. They would have made it with China in mind in order to then get into that market. Because in China, they only allow uh, 16 foreign films a year. And oftentimes, it's mostly like Disney movies, really, you know, um, because they own half of Hollywood at this point. And or at least two thirds of Hollywood, let's be fair, come this Disney, this Disney Fox deal, at least. And so as a result of that, they, uh, th- you know, they they want in on that action. And so there's money there. And if they would have been able to cater the project to that specific uh, c- culture and done in a way that would have actually been able to get around the Chinese censors, uh, it, you know, they would have made more money. That's probably what Paul Feig would have wanted to do now. That's an interesting take, in my opinion, because it's my my opinion and my take on it. But if that was the angle that they were going for, that's something that's cool. I know Ivan Reitman is currently working on on a couple different Ghostbusters projects. You hear little blips about this from time to time, but nothing too concrete. Uh, it's been a year since I saw him at Comic-Con talking about it. There is another live action movie that's being worked on. I have a feeling the live action movie that's being worked on uh, is going to be more in line with the IDW comic. Now, the IDW comic that they have is... Uh, basically Holtzman works on like the containment unit unit and she ends up opening a vortex and that vortex takes her from from her 1985 well in this case in the comics it was all four of them from their sorry their New York City which is really Boston but whatever to from their New York City into Ghostbusters Prime New York City where they encounter the old original Ghostbusters who are now in 2016 age in their 60s compared to what they were back in 1984. And then they're still more uh, adept at catching ghosts. And so like Holtzman and Egon team up and they start like, you know, he's teaching her things and like Ray's teaching them things. And then they end up kind of having this crossover. And that's actually one of the comics. I'm, I'm very much paraphrasing it. But the way I got it from Ivan Reitman at the IDW panel I saw at Comic-Con last year had a lot to do with that specific angle. That was what they were wanting to do, is they were really wanting to, uh, I think, to find a way to merge the two worlds together because they've got the established brand with with the Ghostbusters, the reboot that nobody liked, and everyone was wanting there to be, you know, you know, Venkman and and Ray and Winston and unfortunately, you know, Egon's past, but uh, Harold Ramis, you know, God rest his soul and everything. Uh, that's what they, I think that's what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to bring them in and teach them how to be actual Ghostbusters and then have a crossover that way. And if that's what they're going to do, uh, that could be interesting. But at the same time, I do find it to be like pretty, pretty damn terrible. Actually, I don't want to see it. I would just rather like, I would rather if they're going to reboot it, go back to the Ghostbusters 1984, right? Like that timeline and, and completely just forget, treat Ghostbusters reboot like we treat freaking Green Lantern doesn't exist Electra doesn't exist these other kind of movies that they just don't exist just let it go how we treat the last jedi it doesn't exist it's just it's all a finn's fever dream just let it go that's what i'd like to see that's how i'd like to see it play out and if possible you know get ivan reitman to direct at least one more time uh get the band back together you know bribe the hell out of bill murray get him drunk make him lose a bet like johnny depp did to be in that one French detective movie, whatever it was, he lost a bet, uh, and was in it, you know? So I don't know. There's, there's ways to do it. I think they can, they can pull it off. But the question is whether or not Sony wants to play ball and, 
at this point, that's kind of where everything is at. But anyway, what do you guys think about this? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. Would you ever like to see any kind of crossover? Do you think they should just let it die and, and keep it there? Uh, let me know. My name, of course, is Matt Jarbo. This has been Through by Theater. I will talk to you guys later. Have yourself a fantastic day and peace out. If you enjoyed this video, please consider becoming a patron today for just a dollar per month over at patreon.com forward slash mundane Matt.